Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's almost August, and there's only one thing that people are talking about in August, and that is Garb August. And <clears throat> so it's the third edition of uh, Criminality's Creation uh, from an original idea by Steve Donahue. Um, it's a reading event where we all read trashy books. And if you've noticed anything from this channel, that's pretty much uh, 12 months of the year for me. Um, so I have no, no trouble participating in this event. It's one of the few events I actually successfully managed to do. Um, minor success, at least. Um, and because it's uh, the third edition, it's our Garb August 3D. So I have my 3D glasses all ready here. Um, these are actually courtesy of the amazing vintage um, 2011 edition of Planet of the Apes. They came out. I don't know if you can quite see, but um, there's a little bit of red blues shimmer. That's the that's they created the 3D effect. So when you look at when you look at the uh, book through um, the 3D glasses, then the gorilla jumps right out, and um, all of the background stuff seems to recess. Now there's about it's actually really well done. Is it? It's at, at two. I think it's about three or four levels. Of, of depth perception that they've been, made, managed to create with the 3D effect. So uh, very well done. And, and some would say that is a uh, trashy book. So uh, very much in the, the, the cover is definitely trashy and it's done in 3D is very trashy. Um, but I'm just going to briefly discuss what I'm going to be reading. There's four prompts for four weeks. Uh, there's a bingo card and there's other stuff around it. I won't go into that. I'm just going to go on the weekly prompts. I'll leave a link to Criminality's video um, where you can find more details and it, all, the, um, all of the co-hosts as well. I'm not going to mention all of the co-hosts. Um, just more, this is just more my own personal uh, Garb August reading. So first up is Anything Goes, and this is a book I have to read. I This this is the time I am absolutely going to read it. Um, Satan Was a Lesbian by Fred Haley. This is probably one of the most iconic covers from the um, Sleaze novel era. I think this was originally published in the 60s. Um, the, this edition is actually interesting. Basically... Um, a Canadian student, I can't remember where he was, I think he was out in the prairies or something, but a Canadian stu student was looking for some extra money, um, stumbled upon the, a lot of these sleaze, the, if you, the original covers of these books, if you find an original publication of these books, they can go for hundreds, hundreds of dollars. They're very rare, very sought after. They're like this, uh, so he figured that if he just republished them, just like independently republished them, he'd pro he could sell them at like $25, $30 a pop or whatever and, and, and make some money. Um, took a huge gamble because most of these are in publication right um, limbo. They're not necessarily, they're not necessarily out of copyright. They're not, um, they're not like, domain but a lot of them would have been published by either fly-by-night publishers or just publishers that have gone that have gone bankrupt since the, the collapse of kind of the mass mass market trash market essentially um so we figured there's no one's going to be coming after him so it's it's almost like a lot of a lot of these issues a lot of rights issues it's the the lore is based on someone complaining. Uh, basically, someone has to sue you for. But someone basically has to issue a cease and desist, and and if you continue, then they have to sue you. Um, it it's not a, it's not like a proactive like the police are gonna come after you. Um. See, like the person that holds the intellectual property rights has to has to make has to kind of make the complaint, so. You can get away with a lot of you can get away with a lot of stuff if you're pretty confident that the companies or the or the 
individuals that hold the rights aren't going to come after you. So like, that was basically it. And he published a whole bunch of them. But I think this is probably the most iconic cover that it kind of took all my life on the internet. So I scooped that up a couple of years ago and I really need to read it. Because I am, like, as much as I love all the covers and stuff, I, I'm... I want to read the books. That's mainly why I want these books. Is I actually want to read the books. I'm a lover of trash fiction. Um, and I'm not going to spend $100, $200 to get any originals. Um, the second week is Category Moments, or Men's Adventures. So I'm probably just going to continue along with the Executioner series. So I have Executioner number 21, um, Firebase Seattle. So I'm, I'm working my way through the series, but I don't have every single one in the series. So I'm, I'm just plodding through with the ones that I have. I'm not looking to rent or buy any Kindle editions or hold out or try to like snag the ones on eBay. If I come across, so I think the last one I read was 16, which was the one that wasn't written by Don Pendleton. If I end up coming across like number 17, 18, 19, 20, um, like in the wild for, for like a dollar or less, I'll probably buy them and just read them. Like I don't, you don't super have to read them in order. Um, but I, I definitely need to get the, the, the last book. I need to, what I need, to, I need, this is a palate cleanser from the last book. Cause the last book was just left a uh, nasty taste in my mouth. So that's that one. Um, the next one is sex and or violence. Um, I went for violence, and I've chose this book, which is the um, Tenth Crusade by Christopher Hyde. I chose this book because it's a Canadian author. Um, it looks trashy. It sounds trashy. Um, I but I don't know the author. I always assume it's trash. It's so the the cover is definitely trashy, and um. The synopsis, after 12 long years, Philip Kirkland has his head up back in his arms, then suddenly she is gone, leaving behind only a smear of blood above the bed. Shunned by her family, unaided by police, Kirkland launches a fr frantic search that leads him to the fanatical world of religious cults and into the deadly jaws of its most violent and dangerous offspring, the Tenth Crusade. Together with Sarah Logan, a senator's beautiful daughter, Kirkland is lured into a conspiracy of unthinkable proportions, a labyrinth world of TV evangelists and paramilitary terrorists that tunnels deep into the country's highest levels of money and power. Soon, Philip and Sarah are struggling to stop a ruthless plot to dominate America and walking into a trap where there will be less than half a minute between freedom and sudden death. So not only is it, does it sound uh, kind of conspiracy theory uh, like a like a thriller conspiracy thriller, which I think pretty much any conspiracy th uh, conspiracy theory thriller is trash. Um, it also sounds like it's become quite actually quite relevant now, uh, which is incredible. Is it? I probably actually seems more <laughs> more uh, culturally uh, zeitgeisty than culturally something like or more in the zeitgeist than uh, it probably was in nineteen eighty three when this was released. Um, this also works nicely as if I want to uh, participate in that read your uh, was it a novel novel life or whatever like read your read your life in novels. This is actually was published originally published in the year of my birth in nineteen eighty three. So uh, that's a good that would be a good start to it. Um, and the advantage of that whole challenge is that you don't repeat authors as well as I. I don't think I will be able to i don't think i will read another christopher hyde during the challenge so that would be handy <clears throat> um but yeah that sounds uh that sounds trashy so i think that qualifies definitely violent there's he's holding a uh, machine gun and it looks like to be he, it looks to be a dead woman on the floor maybe she's just passed out i don't know um but yes i would say that was violent and then the last one is a novelization or a book that was turned into a, a 70s or 80s miniseries. And I think this almost doubly uh, qualifies because it's um, Planet of the Apes. This is the volume one omnibus of the novelizations. So it doesn't, so these don't start with Planet of the Apes because Planet of the Apes was a novel that was adapted into a movie. But then all of the subsequent movies in the Planet of the Apes series have novelizations. 
So this is this is the first. I've already read Beneath the Planet of the Apes by Michael Avalone, which was pretty good. Um, very enjoyable. It got me out of a huge reading slump when I read it a year or two ago. I think maybe two years ago. Um, so I'm hoping the Escape from the Planet of the Apes by Jerry Parnell will be um will be similar and yeah, I have to read that. I know uh, I know Jerry Parnell is kind of one of those like paleo conservatives. Um, I've, I've heard he's an absolutely fantastic writer. I have no uh, no qualms of uh, his talent. I just wonder how his uh, political beliefs will come through on this. Um, the Planet of the Apes series was definitely um, politically driven. It definitely at least the subcontext of. Um, uh, politics amongst the uh, the the obvious trashing trashiness nature of of the series, um, and then obviously Planet of the Apes was also turned into a a series. I don't know if you'd call it a mini series. I guess it was just more of a more of a long running series, but it was definitely peak. Um, did it start in the seventies or was it just eighties? Definitely peak, kind of seventies eighties trash, um, but in an endearing way. In a, definitely in an endearing way. It's it's. It's probably worth a, a rewatch. And I think that's it. Obviously, there's the other Garbingo card. There's um, the usual... Um, I think there's a, a group read this year as well. Um, but uh, there will be more videos made before um, the official start to explain. And I'll, obviously, I'll leave all these uh, video down below for all of the salient details that you'll need. Um, let me know if you're going to be participating in Garb August and uh, or if generally if any of your experiences with trashy novels, if you like reading trash or if you absolutely hate it, I don't care. I'm not going to start reading trash so um, I'm not sure why you watch this channel if you're not at least uh, okay with trash, trash fiction. But um, yeah, have a great day and hopefully you're all enjoying uh, some videos by me. Um, if not, <laughs> you probably won't see one for a while anyway. So, joke's on you. Have a good one. Bye.